It is Friday, August 21st, 2020, out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims, and for this segment on the Elite, I'm going to get into um, the NBA draft lottery that happened yesterday. And long story short, the Minnesota Timberwolves now have the number one pick in the NBA draft with two young stars, one of which is on my is one of my elite players, Carl Anthony Towns. They have a nice young core in place. They didn't have that bad of a record this season, but I feel like them adding a number one pick to their to their roster can most definitely set up the Timberwolves for being a very dominant roster if Carl Anthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell stay put in Minnesota. I like the future of this team, and I think it's very impressive, and I'm very happy for them that they won this lottery. Um, the Golden State Warriors, yes, the Golden State Warriors who are in the last four NBA Finals, they have the number two pick in the draft. They still have Steph. They still have Steph Curry. They still have Clay Thompson. They still have Draymond Green. They still have Andrew Wiggins. Like those are four like really, really, really good players. And now they're going to add the second best. Now they're going to add the second pick in the draft. I think with this, they're probably going to go with James Wiseman. I don't know why they wouldn't. Or they have, or if Lamelo Ball or Anthony Edwards slips in, they have the number two pick. They can't go wrong. And because there's the and because they're the Warriors, there's no pressure for them to at least to absolutely nail this draft pick. So I feel with no pressure, the warrior the Warriors are going to be fine. Like they will. They're just going to add a top tier, an elite young, a top tier, almost elite level young player for at least elite, an elite player for his age. They're going to add a, an elite, a really, really good young player to their already stacked roster. And they'll and they're going to compete for the championship next year, which I think the Warriors have gotten the best deal out of all this. Like I, I'm that's that whole thing as well. They could end up with LaMelo Ball and Adam to that to that array of shooters or they can get James Wiseman down low or you can just get Anthony Edwards on the wing. That would be crazy. That small ball lineup would be almost unstoppable. With the third pick is Michael Jordan in the in the Charlotte Hornets. The I I actually I actually kind of like predicted that they would that they would actually get picked pretty high. They they'd leapfrog a couple teams. But this is a good situation for them. They have no they have like as good as Devontae Graham is. He's not their guy. This is their chance to take either LaMelo Ball, Anthony Edwards or James Wiseman because they have the third pick. So they have to get one of those three guys. I think it's their obligation to pick whoever fall, to take whoever falls to them and make him their franchise guy. They're going to have to build around this team because it's the lottery. You never know when you're going to get another top three pick again. And if I'm the Hornets, I'm focusing on I'm making the most of whatever of the three just drops to me. And because because like the whole consensus around it is like there's three guys from America that we at least know of. So at the worst Charlotte's fine. Like they can at least get a guy that should be good enough to at least compete to be to be an all star when he's like in his prime. You know what I mean? But that's the third. So the Hornets have the third pick. The Chicago Bulls have the fourth pick. And I like this situation for Chicago as well, because they do have Lowry Markin and they do have Zach Levine. Zach Levine's like 24. Zach Levine's pretty young. They have Wendell Carter Jr., who I think is going to – I think Wendell Carter Jr. is going to age very perfectly on that team. So I think with big men they're taken care of, I think they'll, pro- they'll, probably, get the, they'll probably get the wing out of Israel. Um, Av- Avdija, I don't, I'm not sure, but it's just like – they have the fourth pick. Like, and the Chicago Bulls have been able to draft pretty smart, and Kobe White's been a beast. So, like, like I didn't mean to leave Kobe White. Like, I, I, I forgot. But, yes, they still have Kobe White on that roster. Like, you can add another piece to that team, and the Chicago Bulls could be right back up to where they were, like, at the beginning of the 2010s. Like, that team could be – that could be a very good young core to build around. And now they have the fourth pick. Like they can either choose to make Lowry or Zach Levine the guy, or they can or they can pick the they can pick their guy right here, number four. Because it's like Hall of Famers can be drafted anywhere. And if like the, the Charlotte the, the Chicago Bulls have the fourth pick. Like and someone could always fall to them. They have the fourth pick. Um with the fifth pick, it's the Cleveland Cavaliers. 
I like this situation as well. I mean, they have Darius Garland and Colin Sexton, and it's like, I like both guys. Um, the Cleveland Cavaliers completely have to rebuild. And they still, the fifth pick is a great pick to have. That's an amazing, like, they could still trade up. Like, they still have trade pieces. Like, Kevin Love is still there. Like, Kevin Love can, like, Kevin Love's won a championship. Like, he can help, like, he can help instill something in these young guys and be the veteran for, like, when they eventually get back to the playoffs because, if they if the Cavaliers draft intelligently, I and like make some smart moves, the Cavs can be back in the playoffs. They very well could. I have a lot of faith in Colin Sexton, to be honest. And they still have the fifth pick in the draft. That's a, that's a that's a that's still a really really good pick. Trey Young was the fifth pick two years ago. Like they could they could take a future Hall of Famer at number five. Still, the Atlanta Hawks got the sixth pick, and as a Hawks fan, I like this pick. I mean, first of all, if John Collins doesn't get suspended, the Hawks probably would have been a playoff team at low because they were they were playing at about 500 when he was back. And I truly believe that he would have been an all star. And if the Atlanta Hawks, no, if the, if he played the whole season, they wouldn't have gotten in the lottery in the first place. So we, we, we shouldn't have gotten this six pick, but the Atlanta Hawks, they got it and no, with, with the young core they have right now, I think that Travis Link is the best drafting GM in the draft over the last couple of years, except for maybe the Denver GM, because he did get Bull Bull and Michael Porter Jr. Like, I can't, I can't hate on the defense. And he got Jokic, like. But for the Atlanta Hawks, with the core they have now, they won't have to trade anybody and just build their team up. His first pick was John Collins when the Hawks were a playoff. They were a playoff team the year before. The first year he took over, once they hired him after they fired their last GM. They hired him from Golden State. His first pick was John Collins. And he could have got a bunch of other players, but he, 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 could, he, he found John Collins at 17. And John Collins looked to be a steal at 17. The next year... He drafts Luka Doncic, but then he trades that pick for Trey Young in a future pick, which he would then make on Cam Reddish, by the way. Trading Luka Doncic for Trey. Trey Young is still an all-star starter. If he's not Luka, they still got an all-star starter in Trey Young and Cam Reddish, who I think is still going to be an, an all-star once, once he's about 26, 27. Or at least he'll be an all-star by then. Like... Travis Schlenk was able to draft those two guys. He was able to draft Kevin Herter at the, at the end of the lottery when Trey was picked or like right after or something like that. He was also able to draft DeAndre Hunter with the fourth pick and still nab Cam Reddish in the last draft. I trust Travis Schlenk. And with the number six pick, he has free range. Like if someone falls to him, if someone falls to him, he'll take it. And if he's had an if he's had his eye on someone that he can just drop in this Atlanta roster and then just have him just gel with the other players. I trust Travis Schlenk with that pick. And I think the Hawks are gonna do make they're gonna make a lot of damage with that number six pick. They can even trade up, honestly. Like they still have they have the pieces to do so. But with that young roster, this team is building up to be a dynasty. And this sixth pick could be the, the the could be the last piece of the puzzle that they fill with Travis Link as their draft as as with their GM. I trust their draft pick. The Pistons have the seventh pick. I like this pick. I mean, I think the Pistons can do a lot of damage with that pick, and they still have Blake Griffin, and they're trying to build. They're trying to build something in Detroit. They're going on full rebuild mode. Rip Blake Griffin. I don't know if Blake Griffin's gonna stay there, but I don't know if you're if I'm Detroit. I'm looking for that guy. You know what I mean? I'm looking for that guy in this draft. If someone falls or just like, just take advantage of the players available. Like take a risk. You're like, you have nothing to lose if you're Detroit right now. The Knicks, the Knicks got the eighth pick. And I mean, rip to the Knicks, uh, rip RJ Barrett. I mean, Mitchell Rob, but it's like the eighth pick is still good. Like there have been Hall of Famers that have been drafted at the eighth pick. The Knicks just have to get lucky. Like I, I, I there's nothing I can really say because I have that whole the whole franchise, that whole thing is a situation. I'll pro I'll probably even make my own like little segment on it. 
Um, the Wizards got the ninth pick, and it's like, I like it, but the Wizards still don't have that guy yet. And it's like, Bradley Beal's leaving. Like, Bradley Beal's obviously the guy, but it's like, the Wizards need to draft their next guy. Like, the Wizards are going to be on complete tank mode because they don't have a guy. Like, they don't have a player to build their team around. As good as Rui Hachimura is, he's not the guy. And if and if he does end up being the guy, like, then I'll be proven wrong. But as of right now, I don't believe in Rui Hachimura. But... Um, but still, like, Hall of Famers have been drafted there. So it's at, at number nine. So it's like, you just got to get lucky. The Phoenix Suns at the 10th pick. Uh, I mean, for a team that almost made the playoffs, the 10th pick is is is, is pretty good, considering you could have gotten the 14th, the 14th pick. So it's like, that's that's a good situation for them. And it's just... And once again, you can just get find find a player that you feel best complements Devin Booker to help complete this team because this this is a this is a borderline playoff team. This is a borderline playoff team that now you're gonna give them a gimme lottery player. I like that pick. The Spurs have the eleventh pick. This is the first time Craig Popovich has had a had a lottery pick in like two decades. That's crazy to me. Um, with all that said. I wouldn't be surprised if the Spurs found their next guy at 11. I trust Spurs scouts with like with all the international success they've had or just like and, and like the players they've been able to find. They they were able to like they were able to poach Kawhi in the draft. Like the Spurs know what they're doing on draft day and this is the highest draft pick that they've had in a long time. So my eye is definitely on the Spurs for this pick. Um, at 12, the Kings, I mean, they have De'Aaron Fox and Marvin Bagley and a bunch of other young players. I mean, at the same time, anyone can follow the Kings. The Kings could always make a trade. Like they could always use this pick as a trade piece. I have no idea what they're going to do with this pick, but it's still a lottery pick. So it's still, it's still a chance of getting a player that's definitely going to help out your organization. 13 were the Pelicans who many people thought should have been a playoff team. And this team is already this this team already has a good set young core. All you need is just someone that can help, like someone that someone that the that the Pelicans front office believes can help smooth out some of the rough edges on their team to help this young core grow to be a perennial playoff team in the West and a very competitive West. Um, and then at with the fourteenth pick. With the, the last pick of the lottery went to the Boston Celtics. So I mean, I forget whose pick it originally was. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna spend too much brain power thinking about that. But they have the 14th pick now. That's all that matters. And the Boston Celtics are a playoff team. This is another opportunity for them to get a no. This is another opportunity for them to um, get another player that complements Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Marcus Mar like. That complements that team. And they still have Romeo Langford, Taco Fall, like Semi Ojale. They have a nice young core. And they could and they could always get another piece right there. And at the, at the same time, like Kawhi Leonard, I think, was drafted 14th or 15th at least. Well, like Giannis was drafted 15th. They could always get an MVP at 14. So it's just you never know. But it's good for a team that's a team that's competing like for a championship this year. They got a lottery pick. Like they're not they're not like a gimme team in the playoffs that's gonna lose in the first round. Like they will not have a top twenty two pick. But no, I mean with I mean with with all that said, that's what I really that that's my that's my impression of the lottery and the situation for each team as they're as they're now placed dropped in this situation. But with that said, I, th I appreciate you for listening to all 13, 14 minutes of this piece. Once again, it is Friday, August 21st, 2020. Uh, out here in this quarantine, I'm James Sims. This is The Elite. Thanks for hearing my piece. Peace out.